Hey, this is Phil from Hazsum. In the following drill card, I'll be interviewing Matt from Hazsum, who's also a Canadian firefighter and expert in this realm. High-risk, low-frequency events such as propane leak in a structure. These drill cards are designed to get you out in training. They're also all from actual events and training events from our customers so that we give you the best tools to get out and train. Today we're going over a propane leak in a residence, and this is this should be really top of mind to any firefighter. We've had the Loudoun County incident, the main incident where firefighters were severely injured or killed um, based on uh, some sort of gas leak. And in this particular operation is just setting up a quick and easy drill for a propane leak in a residence uh, using the HASSIM system. All of these drill cards are meant to be really simple, uh, set up in, in just a short amount of time with what you have uh, just right there with you with the has sim and your first two area. So Matthew, this propane leak in a residence, what, uh, why, what's, why should we be doing this? So Phil, the main objective of this is uh, for regular operation crews is to, first of all, identify the hazards. So we're looking at figuring out that there's an actual flammable environment um then based your based on your ahj and your sops and sogs you want to establish a hot zone and then figure out how much of that contaminant is in the uh, environment so you can make sound decision decide if you want to shelter in place evacuate and what can you do as operation level responder to mitigate the situation so these and out here where i'm from it, there's a lot less propane and more natural gas but this is propane so I'm imagining we're rolling up engine company. It's not a hazmat call. It's, it's, it's a gas leak or it's headaches or an odor complaint in a structure. Um, I know when I was a captain, this would be, hey, I'm thinking about an explosive or flammable environment, right? And then my crew, my expectations would be firefighter turnouts, full PPE, be ready, you know, donning the SCBA, uh, pulling a hose line, uh, all those things. But now we're talking, Okay, either that's been done or you have reasonable suspicion that this was just a skunk walking by. But now we're getting out the four or five gas detector from the rig. And, and the, everybody that has a HESIM knows that if you took your frontline meter and went out and drilled with it, you're just not going to get any reading. So in this scenario, you're saying we're setting up, you know, a structure, whether it be your training tower or a, a, a house in district. We're pulling up, we're, we're doing all those things. And now... The crew's going downrange with the has sim, and what are they expecting to get on the meter? What are they not expecting? What should, what should the instructor be thinking about to challenge these two firefighters? Let's say there's two firefighters, one with the has sim. They're approaching this building. What kind of readings are they getting? Well, before we start talking about the reading, the f there's a few things that we should be uh, considering with our, our participants, our, our students. So first of all, we want to make sure that we're driving the point that um, the vapor de vapor density of propane is denser than air, right? So we're going to get higher reading at the ground level than if you hold your meter up high, and that's significant, right? Most firefighter will just do the uh, metering, holding the meter in front of their face, but we know that using a probe, you'll get much better reading if you hold your probe to the ground. That's so. Wait, I, I got to interrupt because it's I've been. So it's heavier than air, right? So now I'm, I'm picturing, you know, and, and it, whether or not you have a basement. So to break it down, if there's a basement and then a first floor and a second floor above ground, you're saying that this, the propane could, let's say if it has access to it, it could go and fill up the basement, but not the first floor? That's uh, absolutely correct. So it's, uh, it, it's like if you would be pouring liquid on the ground, right? If you would be pouring water on the ground, it's not going to just hang out at a foot level or on the second floor. It's just going to go to the floor and then fill up your basement. Propane is going to act exactly the same way. So we want to make sure that we're metering down down low first. Um, that's going to be our priority. The, the other thing we want to take in consideration is the response time of the device, right? So... Oh, wait. Let me, let me go on that one. So let's just say there's a basement, there's a door to... like. And, and 
we got some pictures here to, to show here. Okay, here. So there's a door into a basement that's going to open and then it'll go below grade. So what are your expectations? So now I've got these guys going out and they're, they know I'm not going to be using any real propane, but they're surveying here right by this opening. As the instructor, what are you going to give them? What kind of readings? Well, right at the door, if they're not uh, taking measuring down below, it, they, they might get maybe 1%, 2% LEL. If they, they go down a little bit lower, they're going to get an increased reading. Uh, let's say in our drill car right by the door, um, they would get up to 9% LEL, right? So because, like we mentioned, propane is heavier than air, you're going to get higher concentration at the bottom of the space. So it's going to be important to really measure those two areas of the atmosphere, basically. And then, so the instructor is able to change even, you know, you've got a six foot tall firefighter walking and now they're monitoring down near the ground, near their boots versus up as high as they could reach. There could be a difference, right? Correct. In and that's going, to be the, that's going to be the job of the instructor to adapt to the action of the firefighters. Right. So if they're ventilating a window, if they're taking measure to mitigate the incident, uh, the instructor is going to have to adapt and change the reading based on their action. And that's the beauty with ASIM is we can um, adjust and adapt to whatever is done by the firefighter in, in the day, basically. Wow. OK, so. And we're seeing here with the structure, they enter the door and it's the same thing, right? You want to, you want to uh, measure readings around the door frame. And then as you open the door, cause of course, introducing air, not oxygen, of course, but introducing air into that room could change the environment, right? Which any, oftentimes ventilation is our friend, even on a structure fire, proper ventilation uh, in creating a flow path. So I'm picturing this propane, you use water. So now I'm thinking kind of water sloshing around on the floor and where I want to direct that. But so I can I can give the students readings. Now, what point are you going to make the meter alarm? And what does that mean to them in LEL, a little refresher? So most of the alarm and the HASM right now are going to go off. The first alarm are going to go off at 10% of the LEL. And then the second alarm is going to be at 20%. Of, of course, this can all be changed. Uh, with our system because we can adapt to whatever action level are in place in your AHJ. Um, but you, most of the time we're going to go with a hot zone at 10% of the LEL. So at that level, at that action level, uh, we should start considering doing some action, whether it's ventilating or evacuate, evacuating the area. Um, as long as something is done to mitigate the incident. So this has been the brief overview of the propane leak in a structure. As you see here, we've got it on the card, suggested readings. We discuss things like ventilation, proper scanning of a door, whether or not your gas is heavier or lighter than air, proper PE, PPE, creating your exclusion zones, of course, uh, ensuring that there's no ignition hazards, all of those things that could be done uh, with your training with the HazSim. We will see you out on the drill ground. Please hit us up on social or give us an email or a text about how your drill went. Thanks.